Hello and welcome back to another video and today, yes, you have read that title correctly. We are looking at some MotoGP 22 gameplay. Now, before we do get into it, I need to give a big thanks to my good friend Dill469. He was lucky enough to win the community preview and get access to MotoGP 22 slightly early for a few days and he's recorded this gameplay for me, so I really do appreciate it. So go and subscribe to Dill. He's also done some more MotoGP 22 videos of his own as well because, of course, he's had access to the beta for a few days, so go check him out. But I'll get straight into the analysis now then. So first off the bat, I suppose the first thing that I noticed is the faces. That was something that Miles has said they were working on improving. And I think overall they do look better. Some of them maybe not. Some of them actually maybe do look a little bit worse. But Jorge Martin, for example, he looks a lot more like a human being. A lot more like Jorge Martin than in the last game. He looked like he, he looked really, really weird for some reason in the last game. Something else that I have just quickly noticed as well is that the, the text at the bottom of the screen, so where it's just like back and select, that's now in sort of just regular casing, whereas before it was all in uh, capital letters. But that, those are the main two things that stick out to me immediately before we've even got onto the track. But you can see down here, so it looks pretty much the same with the warm-up lap, everything like that. The graphics, obviously, in terms of the heads-up display, looking the same because, of course, they just mimic real-life MotoGP. But here's where we see a first change. You can see the cutscene is a little bit different. It's virtually the same, but I think the camera angle was a slightly bit different there. And they actually have personalised uh, narration for who, depending on who's on pole. But here we are, then we're going to see the right height device in action. Off the line, here we go. You can see it is deployed to go down towards the first quarter. So we're on board with Martin. Hitting the brakes, you can see the rear of the bike does come back up. He's got a little bit wide into the first corner there, but he's actually managed to kept, well, he got the lead for a brief period of time there. But here we are, it's probably something that's going to be quite important, down towards the new chicane that's been added into this game. We'll see they've added a new chicane at the Austrian GP for MotoGP, and this is a proper first look at it. I mean, I think maybe it has been in some of the gameplay, but this is the first time I've probably had a good look at it. So it's a very, very different dynamic as we go into Turn 3. Well, what used to be Turn 3, it is now Turn 4. There's a two-factor Ducatis absolutely bash him out of the way. There's been a crash. Seems like in this build, or whatever this is, I, th I mean, it looks like it's pretty much the final version. The AI seems to crash a lot, so I'm hoping that's something that does get fixed a day one patch, but that's something I have noticed from any little gameplay I've seen. The AI seems to be crashing an awful lot, which is not fantastic. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the questions I had from the trailer was actually what button you'd use the right hide device. Dylan has it mapped to A, but it's Y by default. You can see on the right hand side where we've got the little heads up, well, the fairly big heads up display with your gears and your tyres, things like that. You now use down on the left stick to swap between the different modes, where in the past, in the previous game in MotoGP 21, you used Y to switch between the different screens. So that's something I noticed there. Graphic. Oh, there's a big crash for Quartararo though. Quartararo has hit the deck, so again, this sort of means the AI seems to be crashing quite a bit as they are all being very aggressive on the inside of sort of passing Dylan. This is 120% AI, by the way, and obviously he's not had a lot of play time, so that's partially why, but it seems like the AI maybe are a little bit stronger at Austria, although they were fairly decent here last year, to be fair. Uh, one of their strengths, I think, was getting out the corner, which at a power track such as Austria is always going to be quite useful. But if we look at the graphics, to be honest, I don't really see any change whatsoever. I, If you remove the heads-up display here, I wouldn't be able to tell you whether it was MotoGP 21 or 22. Obviously, I can see the RNF Yamaha in front, but let's say it was just on board with Martin here because most of the deliveries are still the 2021 ones, as we've been accustomed to the last few years. They don't release with the new deliveries anymore, sadly. I wouldn't be able to tell it apart. So, sadly, it doesn't look like this big step in the graphics. Not that that's particularly an area that needed to be improved massively, the graphics are already looking pretty good, but it's a shame that uh, it doesn't seem to have been improved on basically at all. Now, one thing I can't really talk about just based on the video, but I can tell you a little bit about what I've been told is the, the physics. So, what Dylan tells me is that when you hit the front brake now, the bike just wants to sit up and go straight on. So, in the past, you could kind of brake with a lot of lean or sort of turn in while you had the brake on a lot. But it now seems like the, the front brake sort of sits you up, tries to sort of run you straight on, which, it, yeah, it, it does in real life. It does sit the bike up a bit more when you get on the brakes. So it seems like it's quite an extreme effect. And uh, I think the bike also feels a little bit heavier, which I'm not too happy about because I already thought the bike was a bit too heavy. Oh, as he has a big moment on the curb there, manages just to sell on the bike, though. But yeah, like I was saying, there was a, I thought the weight was a bit too much in MotoGP 21 in terms of the direction change, and now it seems, apparently, it's even worse. So... Yeah, that's something I'm not particularly looking forward to. But, oh, a hand, an aggressive pass by Brad Binder. Well, we've got to give him realism for that. An aggressive pass by Brad Binder. That is a proper pass by him. But, yeah, I'm really hoping that the weight is not 
too severe because I struggled with it a lot in MotoGP 21, especially when the game first came out. So hopefully it's not the case, but I guess we'll we'll figure out when uh, we get when I get my hands on it. I'll be able to give you my thoughts, but you know what Dylan says is going to be correct. He's a very good player. He's better than me, so <laughs> what he says uh, definitely is correct. So the physics. Those are the main two changes I've heard. I mean, there probably is some other tweaks, but I think I think what he told me basically was it feels very much like MotoGP 21.5. And just by looking at this, you can see that that's definitely what it looks like. You look in the bottom left-hand corner, the the minimap looks pretty much the same. One thing I've noticed is the delta now seems to be in a bit of a box instead of just being sat there, which actually I do like. So where it says plus 0.7, it's 0.7 off his previous lap time. I actually quite like the fact that now that's now in a little box, but. Your, your previous lap times seem to be the same in the box below there. So really the only thing on the heads-up display has changed is something's been put into a little box and the gauge in the bottom right-hand corner, which they always change every year anyway, uh, they've changed that a little bit. But it seems to have basically the same elements on, it's just displayed in a slightly different form, form factor. Well, to be honest, it's just the back the backdrop is different, the rest of it seems to be the same. But coming up towards the line there, it's going to be 15th place. Like I said, of course, he's only played a little bit of the game and it wasn't the hardest AI difficulty, and it seemed like the AI were very, very fast around Austria. I mean, if we look at those times, 1 minute 28.7. Actually, I don't know, actually. Oh, of course, I was about to say, I don't think that's a good lap, but then I forgot about the chicane. So, I don't really know what the lap times will be like. Add a few seconds on for the chicane, four seconds or so. Probably about right. So, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see what the lap times are looking like. But that's uh, that's the first my first thoughts of the first MotoGP 22 gameplay that I've really analysed. Looks very, very similar to MotoGP 21, not really a lot to say in that department. Obviously the heads-up display is pretty much the same, the graphics look pretty much the same. Obviously I can't comment on the physics too much because I've not played the game, but I told you, you know, what I've been told. There's just a few little bits like the team colours, for example, you can see on the screen now, I mean, that they're wrong, as they usually tend to be. Obviously they're, they're, all, they're all a bit washed out, they're a bit too bright compared to what they actually are, so that's a bit of a shame, but... Uh, that's just one of those things that you're always going to get that every year. I've seen the Moto 2 ones, they're even worse. So uh, it's not a big deal, but it does annoy me a little bit when it's such a small feature. All it is is RGB values and they're incorrect. It kind of, it does annoy me a little bit there. But yeah, that's pretty much my first thought seeing this MotoGP 22 gameplay. So I hope you guys did enjoy that one. Hope you're looking forward to MotoGP 22 coming out. It's only two weeks now, two weeks literally tomorrow, I think it is when I'm recording this. So I am really looking forward to it. Can't wait to get my hands on MotoGP 22. I'm going to be trying to do as much content as possible because I am on a little bit of a break now. Uh, well, I will be on a little bit of a break when the game comes out from uni. So uh, hopefully I should be able to get a few videos out for you guys. So hope you do look forward to that one. But like I said, I hope you did enjoy that one. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Hope you're all staying safe and I shall see you in the next one.